Welcome to another edition of the Five Minute Major, give or take a few minutes, from Hockey Wanderlust. I'm Rob Simpson in Toronto, joined by the esteemed Ken Yaffe in New York. Kenneth. Simmer, always good to wake up and talk hockey. As we're in the morning, of course, and it's afternoon in Europe, and it is uh, Gernot Tripke, the CEO, Managing Director of the Dell, the German's premier ice hockey league. Gernot, how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you for the invitation. Very excited to have you here. So much to talk about with the growth of the German league over the last decade plus and some of the names that have come out of Germany recently. But unfortunately, we have to start with the bad news. And that is, of course, the pandemic and its effect on everyone everywhere. I do recall in March, you were speaking about getting assistance from politicians or government and trying to figure out how the league can move forward. Um, where are we in, as it stands right now, as we enter the summer of 2021? We were happy to get into the season season in the first place uh, uh, late last year, uh, very late. We only started the week before Christmas. Uh, uh, normally, we should have started mid mid September, but uh, given all the facts and the restrictions we had, with not being able to train for a few weeks in the summer because that wasn't even allowed, and then coming back to playing on a professional level, but but without spectators being allowed that put a lot of uh, financial stress on the teams in the first place. And we took a very long and good decision uh, how we can uh, work the schedule to save some costs. Uh, we had long discussions with the politicians, with the government, if there are any subsidies, any, any help uh, financial wise uh, to get, get going. And uh, obviously we were, almost done in, in October and we're, we're ready to call it call it quits and, and to let the season pass. Uh, uh, and then it was kind of like, uh, there was a little light at the end of the tunnel with some 800,000 euros funding from the, from the government uh, for, for uh, ticket loss. We had a long, long discussion with our players that were very helpful. And by the time they realized this season is probably not going to be played, uh, and although everybody wanted to play, uh, uh, they said, okay, we can't like stop our careers, careers for one and a half year. So there was a lot of uh, 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 positive vibrations from the players in accepting uh, up to 60% uh, salary cuts. And, and we're not talking about NHL salaries. We're talking about maybe a tenth of that. So, so like average average making maybe 100, 120,000 euros. And there are professional players, full-time players that play for 40, 50,000 euros in our league. So, mm -hmm. so, so they had to really uh, accept uh, very harsh pay cuts. We were very lucky with a lot of sponsors uh, 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 staying with us and saying, okay, even though you have a shortened season, even though you don't have fans in the arenas, we will still uh, pay our, our sponsorships. Uh, uh, and we have our ownership. I mean, we had owners and they definitely had to put in a lot of money into the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, to save hockey, to be to keep it on the map, we had a, a shorter season with 38 games instead of 52. We had the playoffs only three rounds. We cut the wild card round, and we only played best of three instead of best of seven to be ready for the World Championships now. So very very quick in a short time. So so actually they were playing every other day, and and they were in a practical quarantine home and arena. And, and we had a very strict testing protocol. If we start to look forward now, um, we, we more and more you see the DEL on the broader hockey landscape as a, as a premier league. Um, how, how is the game in Germany, both um, from the, the, the competitive landscape uh, and, and player development, and also from a fan's perspective, popularity of the game across the, the, you know, the broader and, and cluttered sports landscape. But, but first, uh, from a player development standpoint and, and, and growth of the game, uh, starting at the grassroots level on up. I think we had a, a, a big vacuum. Hockey was very positive and in the media, especially through the national team in the 70s and 80s. And, and then it kind of went down. Uh, uh, we also maybe because the national team was not as good anymore. Uh, uh, it, it was also good players moving to the NHL in the pre-social media uh, uh, pre media era. 
where you would pr totally lose those players. You would lose them for the World Championship, for the national team, but you would also lose them in the media as, as the big names. So we had mm -hmm. Erich Künakel as, as the superstar up to, I would say, four or five years ago. So he was like big in the 70s and 80s. Uh, and but he was the hockey household name, and and that only changed really now with 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 the Olympics uh, in Pyeongchang, 2018, with those players, especially now with Leon Dreisaitl, and and even guys like Uwe Krupp or Markus Sturm, they were not really household names in Germany until they came back and became national coach. So as players, they weren't maybe the superstars like like Leon. But, but they were good, great players and, and, and the best players in Germany in their decade, but nobody knew them. I mean, even the German hockey fans kind of lost sight of them. So that, is, that has changed a lot. We have changed player development. I think eight to 10 years ago, we, we kind of realized, usually the pro teams would realize on the system, on the normal system, on the federation, on the associations, and, and, and it didn't work. So we kind of started uh, a very, very small program, uh, a five-star program and hired uh, uh, one guy to really look around and, and, and consult and control our junior programs of the pro teams for those 14 teams. And it really helped a lot. And actually a couple of years later, the, Na the National Federation adopted that system, that five-star system, which is now called Power Play 2026 by the Federation and put that to more, like hired some more people to bring that to, 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 the, to the junior programs. And that really is, uh, it was a big step, still saying hockey in Germany is, is very popular fan-wise, but it's, it's a very niche sport. I mean, it's, it's 20, not even 20,000 people playing uh, and we started with that program and the first guy in the, in this camp in the first camp under 13 was Tim Stützle. So he was, he was the first guy uh, and he went basically totally went through this five-star concept and, and, and uh, uh, we really, it, it's like uh, um, he looked around everywhere, Finland, Sweden, Canada, whatever, and took some best, best practices and tried to, to bring that to Germany and focusing really on giving getting better coaches, but getting also a strategy there and, and also have some checks and balances. So, so, uh, so we try to really uh, focus on that. And although it's not our premier business uh, junior hockey, uh, because we are a pro hockey league, but, but we took that over, especially for the DL. We're getting young players and we have an under 23 rule in our league that you have, if you want to fill the roster, the last three spots have to be under 23 that can play for Germany. And now we have the players. I mean, it, it was a huge discussion to, to introduce that rule because they just weren't players capable of doing it. And, and, and now it's good. I mean, you see the under 20 and, and they can all play. How many, how many rinks now? Ger Germany's about 85 million people, something I think in that rate. How, how many rinks today? Uh, you've been at the, at the league uh, in an executive capacity since the late 90s. Um, how many rinks maybe back then and how many rinks today? Uh, at, and I think you said the number is 20,000 20, uh, registered players. Today. I don't know the number of rinks, but unfortunately decreasing. Hmm. So, so the infrastructure is really still decreasing. It's hard. They were used to be uh, uh, city owned and sometimes with swimming pools in the back. So, so it's still the trend is really going down. And what we've been doing is to have this limited resource to use it better. It's not like we have a lot of more kids, but we have on the grassroots level, we have more kids applying and we probably get better athletes now and in different parts of, of, of the country. But the, still, the number is really limited due to due to facilities, due to ice time, due to ice rings, due to coaches. So it's really now the coaches are better and, and the quality of whatever the development and education of the kids get. But, but we can't go like with tons of players and outdoor rings or whatever. It's really, really limited. I mean, you have, you take Hamburg, Northern Germany. I mean, they have one and a half million uh, inhabitants, they have one rink. Wow. One, one ice rink, and that's shared by ice skating, schools, figure skating, and I think two or three hockey teams there. Hmm. So in even the whole Northern Germany is, is like, like uh, diaspora. I mean, they have three or four rinks in for, I would say, 
five to 10, 10 million people. So, so that is really a lot of work to do there. And the Olympics, I think, helped uh, uh, the silver medal in, in Pyeongchang uh, because it, it brought hockey back to a, a brighter, uh, a broader spectrum and also politically uh, uh, we're back. I mean, even even Leon was was maybe the last example that he was developed and, and had to go over to North America with 16 or 17. Yeah. And now you have the guys, you have Stützle, you had Zayda last year, you have all the other guys, Reichel, Peterka coming up maybe next season in the NHL. They all play in Europe, in Germany, and sometimes even like like two or three years in pro. So, so, so that has changed and that was, was never the case before. So the very few super talents would go to North America. And now we have like the under 20 national team, they all play in Germany. I think they had just a couple of guys in Austria, but, but, but so, so that has really changed. Fair note, how, how big is Leon Dreisaitl mainstream Germany? Like in terms of, is he marketed? Does he market himself? Is like, how big is he just in society in Germany at this point? He's getting a household name, not marketing wise, because he's not here enough. Yeah. Uh, but but he's really he's been sportsman of the year last year. He was elected to be sportsman. So in the likes of Boris Becker or Michael Schumacher, so he's like up there in that category, and that made also made him gave hockey and him a, a, a very wide audience. Uh, there may be some marketing in the future. But then again, he's not here. I mean, he's, he's, he's here three, four weeks a year and training with Cologne and happy to be with his buddies. So, so uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's, that's uh, uh, maybe, maybe in the works. And, uh, but the bottom, uh, but he, line, the bottom line, but he's, though. Become, but he's become prominent. And, and with him, you have now Stützle, you have Philipp Grubauer. So there was a big, big, a lot of stories about Tim Stützle being drafted and going over. So, so yep. yeah, we, we have some, actually, we have some hockey superstars now. As it relates to your business specifically, those things that you just went over, silver medal in the Olympics, superstar hockey players, when COVID's said and done, and we move on to the normal, hopefully, will you not? from a selling a ticket standpoint and getting eyeballs on television, are you still not kind of on a, on a growth specifically at your level of your business? Uh, we are, have been on a growth since I've been there, but, but yeah. it's, it's very, uh, uh, I would say we're the second tier and, and it's a lot different like in North America or even in England. Uh, second tier really means there's football and football and football and football and football in Germany. <laughs> And we're somewhere between second and third league football yeah. and or up to with third league. So, so um, it's really, really hard. So, so although there's growth, it, it's very hard for the likes of, of and, and we're probably team sport or, or indoor sport number one and team sport number two. All the key numbers are, are better than handball and basketball, although handball is like a very traditional German sport. Uh, uh, but, but we like, we have growth. Uh, we've seen growth in, in the media part, but it's not like we're still, our media revenues only account to five to 10% of our revenues. That's why COVID hit us so very, very hard. And, and, and we're still not, and we probably never will be, as, at least as long as I, I will be working for the league, we will not be a strategic sports rights. Sports rights in Europe are strategic and you have like Finland, Sweden, hockey is the, is the sports asset you need to have if you're a pay TV or a new uh, uh, platform, you need to have as a sports, you need to have the hockey league. Switzerland also, and you're very close to football. And probably hockey is more 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 important than, than football in, in Switzerland. In Germany, it's the strategic right that gets astronomical payment is, is the first league football and they market it together with second league. So, 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 so that, that's like bundled and, and really takes away from all our others. So we're still number two. But, but, but so we've seen growth and we've seen changes and now we get like all our, for four years with the telecom, we get all, all our games produced as OTT. You have to see, I mean, we, we were coming from four years ago, we had 40 games on free TV produced, that was it. Before that, uh, 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 seven years ago, we had for 10, 15 years with Premiere and Sky, Ken, Ken still knows that time, mm -hmm. uh, we had mm -hmm. 40 games on pay TV per season. Yeah. 
now we have 50 games on free TV per season and all 400 plus team uh, games on, on uh, like, you know, NHL TV. So, so it's Telecom Magenta Sport. So it's full HD and with commentators there. So, so we, and that really gives us a chance for, for highlights, for social media to really spread our reach totally uh, uh, to use all that. Because even with the new media and internet platforms, there was just not a, a lot of footage until three, four years ago. So, so that has changed dramatically uh, and, and helped us a lot in marketing. Thanks so much for, for joining us today, Gernot. It's been a, a great to catch up with you and we'll, we'll stay in touch over the summer and, and uh, through the draft and, and look forward to a robust 2021-2022 season for the DEL. Okay, thanks for having me and hope you guys can come over and, and see some new, more live games in the DL. And uh, we have some like the new arena in, in, in Munich in the making. So that's definitely going to be a next step. You mentioned the arenas. Truly some of the best uh, hockey arenas in, in all of Europe are, are in, uh, across the DEL. And it sounds like with Munich, uh, that'll only add to uh, that unique feature of, of the league. We're there. We're there. Trust me, yeah. we're there. Look, Thank you very looking much. Looking forward Jim. to that. Hope to see you guys. <laughs> see you, bud. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.